Welcome back everyone. Sorry I didn't get this project actually videoed while I was working on it, but I was having some camera issues. So I wanted to show you what I've completed here. So I have this 14 foot flatbed trailer. There's a 2 foot dove on the back of it. Uh, ramps are not connected, they're separate. I use it primarily as a car hauler. And obviously I've taken it to the home store periodically for lumber or pallets of things. It does a good job for that. However, my pickup truck over there needs some work before it's roadworthy again. And it's about that time of year when I need to pick up a load of firewood. So I wanted the ability to transport my own wood for once instead of having to worry about how to get it here. I've actually gone without using the wood stove for several years just because I didn't, uh, didn't have a good way to get the wood out here. So I wanted to make an enclosure for this trailer, make it easier to transport things like cut and split firewood. So I made these stake sides. What I used were 2x6s. These are pressure treated, 14 feet long, so the horizontals on the sides are all one piece. I wanted them 4 feet tall with a total of 5 horizontals on the edges here. So what I had to work with, there are 3 stake pockets in front of the fenders here and one stake pocket behind the fender on each side. And obviously this center one here is not connected, so I'll get to that here in a second. So the first thing to know about building stake sides is the verticals. Now obviously this one is done on a dovetail, so I cut down the size of my post that goes into the pocket here a little bit further uh, in order to allow me to take this vertical and tip it forward slightly to make it possible to remove this side with the pallet forks instead of having to cut it down the middle or take it out in pieces. So I'm just using this one as a reference just because it's the easiest one to get to here. But the way you cut these down, these stake pockets are designed for a slightly cut down 2x4. Now I could have purchased 2x4s but I figured I'd just get all the same material so I used 2x6s for my verticals. What that means is I needed to cut this down by 3 quarters of an inch on each side. So I used the table saw to do that in two cuts. So the first cut, I measured how deep into the pocket I wanted this vertical to go, set the rip fence for that against the blade, and then set the depth of the blade for the three quarters of an inch required here. I then set the board on its edge and ran it through the blade in order to get this cut that you can see here. So once I had those taken care of, then I reset the rip fence for the three quarters of an inch between the blade and the fence and raised the blade up all the way as high as it would go to try to make the side as vertical as possible. So obviously it's a round blade, everybody knows that. So if you leave it just barely protruding, then you're going to have a huge difference between the cut angle at the top and the cut angle at the bottom. So by raising this up as high as it would go, I got it as vertical as I could, thus raising the angle of my cut. But as you can tell, even with that, I still have a little bit of an overcut on some of these because of the way I did it. So what I did, I just ran the post in until I got close, and then removed it and finished it off with a handsaw. So <clears throat> I did that with all of these. Then I put my first horizontal in place. Since it's laying right on the trailer frame, it was easy to do. I just dropped it in here. Let me show you what it looks like up front. So up here, I want it to be just behind the stop bar up here. So I set that distance and clamped it to each of these poles. So I then used a framing square to make sure that I was perpendicular for each one. Drilled two holes and put in lag bolts. Sorry, carriage bolts. Lag bolts, there is no such thing. So these are five inch carriage bolts, five sixteenths, uh, two per intersection here. And then from there, once I had these connected, I did just the first three verticals. I did not put that rear vertical in just yet. Now that was done after the fact. So I then figured out how much extra distance I had. So between the top of this horizontal here, there we go, top of this horizontal here all the way to the top of the post, 
because I wanted this top one to line up exactly with the top of the post here. So, obviously a 2x6 is 5.5 inches wide. And I figured out that what I needed was 5 inches of spacing between each one of these to allow me to get this up to where I wanted it to be. So, I used a couple cutoffs from making the posts because I used all 14 footers so there were some little, uh, little pieces left, about 1 foot in length. I cut them down to 5 inches, made two of them, and set one in here. Come on. I set one in here, and then set one in the back, so I could put the second board on. Once I had that board in place, then I realized that the back section here was sagging a bit. So when I had the first two boards in, I went ahead and cut the rear verticals and then angled them as far forward as I could to try to make it possible to take this whole thing out as one unit. So I got this one bolted in place onto the first two boards and then continued working my way up. So I kept working with the same spacers between each one of these and adding a horizontal as I went up until this side was complete repeated the process on the other side. Next it was time to take care of the front section. So there are no stake pockets across the front of this trailer and I decided I didn't want to weld anything in here. So what I did instead, first thing was to place this top cross piece and I did that because there are metal angle braces, you can see them right there coming across the, the inside of this and the inside of that one. So that allowed me to use the braces to make sure that this top board lined up the way I wanted it to. And even though the spacing is different in the front, I did want to make sure that the top board lined up exactly even with the side boards. It makes it easier for me to throw a tarp over it without worrying about punching holes in the tarp. So, put that one in place. Then I decided where I wanted my verticals to go. So in this case, I wanted them inside of the uh, front steel here. Now they don't quite sit up against it, they're sitting a little bit back from it, partially because um, I did not worry about getting perfectly straight lumber here. So there's a twist in all of this, it's warped, it's, um, it's definitely not straight. But that's fine, it didn't need to be. So anyway, I could have drilled and bolted through the angle iron here, but again, I decided I really didn't want to drill through the trailer. Um, just more bolts I have to take off when I want to take this thing apart. So what I did, once I had the top horizontal in place, I cut the vertical to length and then set it where I wanted it, lining it up with the inside of this angle iron here, right there. So then I took my framing square, made sure that it was 90 degrees, so perpendicular to the steel here, <clears throat> clamped it in up top, and put the bolts in. Then once I had that, I went ahead and put in the bottom board down here, so two verticals, then put in the bottom board to connect everything, because again, this board here sits right on top of the steel, so it was easy to use as a, as a framing reference. From there, I just worked my way up. So <clears throat> these were a little bit more difficult to combine. Basically what I wanted to do, I knew I wanted another angle bracket down here. So these two needed to overlap somewhat. But I also didn't want the amount of spacing it would have been if I had taken this and run it all the way up top. So I took this board and ran it down a little bit. So there's an overlap here, big enough to put the bracket in but it still is sitting a little bit lower than the ones next to it. So that one should allow me to continue to push, put things in here and not have them slide out through this hole, I hope. I guess we'll find out. I can always put a piece of uh, plywood up against it or something if I need to. So up here, this one lines up. This one obviously does not, and this one obviously does not. <clears throat> so I could have added an extra board in here, but again, I just didn't feel the need to do so. So once I had these all bolted in place, and the angle brackets, there are two on both sides, 
connected, then it was time to make the back tailgate. The tailgate was a little bit more complicated. Now, again, I did not take the time to make sure everything was cut perfectly straight, or honestly, to even check and make sure that my side stakes were all the same length. I oriented them the same, so up front I made sure that their distance from the front post was the same, but again, I didn't bother checking length on this because it's a utility trailer. I really don't care if everything lines up perfectly. All I needed was for the hinges to line up the way they were supposed to. So what I did to start with, <clears throat> this bottom cross board here, I cut these long enough to go between the two sides. So you can tell here, there's the side and here's our back tailgate. And same thing over here, you notice the extra spacing on this side. So I measured these based on where I wanted the two sides to be to make sure that the sides were sitting vertical. And obviously, if you look up at these two, there's a lot less spacing here and really none here as compared to the ones further down that have extra spacing on them. So I just cut all of these to the same length. I could have very easily cut them individually, uh, made sure that both sides were sitting vertical, and then cut everything one piece at a time to make sure that it all lined up and looked really pretty. But again, don't care. I figure at some point, once the truck's running again, I may never use these stake sides again. So it wasn't worth the effort to really put in all that much work. So, what we have here are four hinges. <clears throat> so, standard flag hinges. Um, the carriage bolts are put in from the inside out. So, you've got, obviously, your nuts and hardware on the outside here. Um, I was going to put all four bolts in, but obviously I realized that these two are not going to be very effective. I could screw into them, but you've got the other board right there. So, it wasn't going to add a lot of extra strength by putting one inch screws in here. So I decided not to bother using them. So, put that hinge on. <clears throat> I supported this board going all the way across, made sure it was perpendicular, and used a temporary clamp over here just to hold it in place. There too, I did the same thing, next one up. Put in the second board with a hinge to hold it in place. Put my spacers, the five inch spacers I used on the sides in between and made sure everything lined up. And once I had those two in place, then I was able to put the verticals on. So the verticals here are slightly shorter than the top crossbar. It wasn't really intended that way, but that's kind of how they ended up. Here's the reason why. <clears throat> so I originally cut these to go on the inside of the board but I decided to put them out here as an extra stabilizer. Not to mention the fact that with them sitting here at this position, it allows them to sit right on this piece of steel. So this is where my ramp hooks go when I'm using this with ramps. So definitely strong enough, and by having these sitting here, it allows the tailgate to be supported when it's in the closed position. Obviously, since I don't have very many stake pockets on the side, uh, when I open this tailgate and those two are no longer sitting there, that one and that one, what you end up with is this side twists in like this and the gate drops. So I can still operate it, no problem. I just have to be somewhat careful with it and make sure that I hold on to it as I'm rotating it around and not uh, let it go and just let it swing. So put the verticals on and then continued working my way up with the spacers to get the remaining three horizontals in place. Once I had those in place, then I set the two remaining hinges up here. You'll notice the top hinge. See how this board is outside where the rest of these are lining up? So obviously that hinge needed to be spaced out to make sure that it continued to do its job. So, the latches. You know, here too, I wanted something to keep it closed, to try to keep honest people honest, something I could potentially throw a lock into, 
but I also wanted something that was solid enough that it would solidify the back portion of the stake sides. The front is plenty solid. You've got four corner brackets, you've got lots of verticals. That's not going anywhere. But back here, I didn't want to grab onto this and have it shake. So, what I did, <clears throat> I've got these guys. So this is a metal rod. The latching mechanism here is designed for a gate. So what you do is you take these 90 degree brackets and you put them on your gate. You run this bar down through it, down into a pipe in the ground. So you can then drop this into the pipe, it holds your gate closed and everything's fine. What I decided to do here was to put these in an angle. So I had to do this because if we look at this one here, what you have, this has a little notch on it, an extra piece of metal here, that has to go through a cutout in the bracket. And in order for it to do that, the handle has to be in this orientation. So the problem with that, I wanted to run these down through a hole in the board to make them as solid as possible. But the issue came down to, I needed an ability to put this handle in this position. So what you have here, I put them at this angle to allow me to rotate this handle up into the 90 degree position here, right there, so I can pull this out of the hole it's in. So spin that around and lock it down, that keeps it in place. I've got one up here doing the same thing. So these are relatively tight. In fact, I might even um, oval this out a little bit. This hole's a little bit tighter than the other one. So we'll see. I may play with it a little. So we have those two that are doing the primary holding here. So this is solid. Uh, between this rear gate sitting between the two sides and those pins in place in those two positions, that's holding it steady. It's no problem there. But I wanted to put a couple of hasps on it as well. So I used this kind of a hasp with the double pivot here. Um, <clears throat> obviously I've got it screwed on underneath the metal here, and then we're screwed on over here as well. So of course you could grab onto this and rip this right out of there. And these are stake sides, it's not an enclosed trailer. So I'm not doing this to try to keep people from getting to my stuff. It's more a matter of I want to make sure that this gate doesn't come open on the road. So I've got two of these here. These were the easiest spots to get to, and the uh, yeah the boards that were the easiest to work with. So one up top, one a couple down from there, and right now I've just got pins in them. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, little carabiner type clips. I can put locks on them if I really want to, but I don't know that I need to do that. Okay, so the next thing you'll see right up here, notice there's an eye bolt. There's another one halfway forward, if you can see it up there. Got the same thing on the other side. So the issue here, I want to be able to fill this with firewood. So obviously I can't fill it completely. Uh, I did some calculations and found out that if I fill this all the way to the top, front to back, we're talking three cords of firewood. Now based on the weight of oak, which is the kind of firewood I'll be getting my hands on, that is well over the 7,500 pound weight limit for my trailer. So I'm not going to do that. The trailer can hold about two cords. So I figure that's not bad. About two thirds full. That's a pretty good uh, combination here. But that does put a lot of pressure on especially these sides, pushing them out and away. The front and back I'm not as worried about. They're much shorter. So even though they don't have posts going in, um, they should be stable enough. But I wanted to be able to pull the sides together a bit and make sure that they're solid when I go loading this thing. So what those eye bolts are for, I'm going to build a couple of uh, eighth inch steel cables with turnbuckles on them. So they'll have clips on both sides so I can remove them. And when I put them in, I'll use the turnbuckles to tighten it down. So the way this will work, I'll load firewood primarily from the front on back. And as I start loading it up in the front, I'll clip that central cable in between. Then as I get closer to the back here, I'll clip the rear cable as well. 
probably leaving it somewhat loose because obviously you have to be able to get the tailgate in place. But once the tailgate's in and is latched down, then I can reach over the top up here and operate the turnbuckle right in here. So it should be easy enough to do. So, <clears throat> I still need to make those cables, but this is a set of stake sides built on a 14 foot flatbed using just the stake pockets that were currently available and just a trailer load of lumber. So hopefully this gives you some ideas if you're considering the same thing and hope you all enjoy the projects you're getting into. I'll see you over the next horizon.